Welcome to Media Minute Roundtable. For this edition, we don't have any idea what we're going to be talking about for this one. So hang on, buckle up your seatbelts, and we'll be back right after this. Welcome to Media in a Minute Roundtable. I'm Michael Forward. I'm Chris Raskowski. And I'm Rachel Edge. And guys, have you ever read a book where you hated every character in the book? Yes. No. Yeah. Yes. I haven't. 100%. Yeah, really? It's what, the what worst. Book? Sorry? What, what book? Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm going to blank on the Three. name. You just hated everybody. <laughs> what was it about? It couldn't have been it was that much hate. It, well, it was one of those books that wasn't like very memorable <laughs> you just like say i saw it and it looked interesting and i was like okay like this kind of fits the genre that i'm into because i'm a very as everybody knows by now i'm a very big like stephen king fan like clive barker stuff like that and i cannot remember the author's name for the life of me but i remember reading it it was like post-apocalyptic and it's like they tried to get you to connect with the characters because it was like a young girl who had been what was it called uh like orphan because of the post like the apocalypse and um she got picked up by like a random stranger like not in a bad way but like he wanted to take care of her because he lost his own kid and it's like you kind of connected with them but you were like you didn't (laughs) yeah there was no it was like are you talking about the road no it's not the road because i love the road the road was really good i can't i honestly am blanking on the name of the i'm gonna have to find it and send it but like yeah it was like one of those ones where it was like it was it it was it's supposed to make you feel connected to the characters, but then, like, you were reading it, and you're like, I so, honestly hate these people. So but, did, was it their attitude, like, the character's attitude, or were they just, like, bland? They were very bland. Yeah. Like, there was no spice to them yep. at all. Like, <laughs> And it sucked because <laughs> it's, like, I'm the kind of person, I'm like, when I start a book, I have to finish the book. I can't leave it unfinished because then, like, I will be laying in bed at night thinking, why didn't I finish this book? So, like, I finished it, and it was, like, happy endings, and it's, like, you should be, like, excited for them, but I was just, like, all right, cool. Yeah. I've completed it. Yeah, the reason why I brought it up, uh, I've been listening to a couple audiobooks uh, recently, and uh, I got one, this one for free uh, online. So, yeah, the, uh, I hate it. I hate all the characters. (laughs) I'm about six hours into this book, and I hate all the characters it's it's that sucks. it's terrible and I'm, I'm like you like i have to like have to finish it you know because I, I do a lot of walking and when i walk like i listen to an audiobook so like walking without being able to listen to something is like even worse but oh man uh and it's uh it's like a video game tie-in book a mass effect uh book oh yeah what yeah and it's bad it, that sucks like the the narrator mm. does a, a fine job and everything but holy crap, like, it's about, like, these people get sent to, like, another galaxy. So you think, like, if you're sending a whole bunch of people to another galaxy for, like, a colony mission, you would, like, qualify them and go through, like, a psychic analysis and everything. Like Some you, sort of vetting Yeah, you would, you would want, like, Absolutely. the best people. But the, all these people are terrible. They bicker. They fight. They're angry for no reason. I, like, I, I have five hours left in this audiobook, and I'm not looking. Like, forward to it <laughs> i'm so sorry yeah yeah like conflict isn't necessarily plot yeah here. oh my god that's I mean? something i wish more writers would understand because it's like i understand like when you put conflict in a book it's like oh cool like i'm gonna get the like, get, p- get people interested but if that's all your books about it's kind of like being surly uh, is not a like <laughs> doesn't sorry, make surly. Gra- yeah Shut up. <laughs> yeah doesn't make me gravitate to you. Like there has – your main character, there has to be something likable about him. There's something that you need to grab onto. Yeah. You yeah. To, you know, maybe – Bring some, you in. Yeah. But holy crap. No. <laughs> Just not having it. I'm so – It's just, No. So sorry. I, I, if I had paid for it, I would be super angry. That's, that's the only redeeming factor <laughs> was that it was like a free uh, thing like uh, on Audible. Like – because they, they have like yeah. fr- free books if you're subscribed. So <laughs> – <laughs> Oh, I get it. I've yeah. watched bad movies and be just like, yeah. Just none, disa- of the, none of these the people disappointment. Are, are redeemable in any sense. Like it's yeah. different for like a horror movie or whatever, where like, you know, if if you see a bunch of terrible people get killed off in a horror movie, it's like, oh yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, I had a good, I had you're like low one. key cheering for it, yeah. Yeah, but no, everybody's terrible. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> how would you select these people for a colony mission? Makes no sense. Plot twist: They put them on there because they didn't want to deal with them anymore. They're yeah. like, send all the <laughs> shitty people. Yeah. We'll Let's send uh, the most obnoxious. Yeah, we'll, we'll send them to find. another like complete galaxy because like yeah. Milky Way can't handle you. It's like we got to get. No, rid of we're people. like, no, you're out of here. <laughs> that's, that's what it seems like. Uh, boy. So Chris, you said you've read a you've never read a book where you had that happen. I haven't. Yeah. Really? I've read bad books, but not not one where you completely I, I, hate the characters. To be fair, I don't read a lot of fiction. Yeah. Oh, fair. So, that maybe that's why. That's fair. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna flip it. Let's do a positive here. Like, what's a book that you read that you were like, how you had low expectations for, it, but then you read it and you were like, holy crap! Like, this is like one of my new favorites. I don't know if I've gotten into a book with low expectations. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> I same. Like, I when I'm spending money on a book, yeah, I have high expectations. Well, like, I just mean in the sense of, like, it was more of, like, a, it's like, okay, cool, like, this looks like a good read, and then it's like, when you're reading it, you're just like, this is way better than I expected it to be, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I've yeah. definitely had some duds. For sure. Maybe The Running Man? The book? Yeah. Because like, you don't expect one. a lot because of The Running Man movie, which is which is fantastic in its own right. But... Oh, The Running Man the movie? Yeah. Like, Iron Schwarzenegger? Yeah, yeah, so good. Great. Yeah. But the, but yeah, the, the uh, book's completely different. The... Was it Richard Bachman? Yeah. Yeah, he, he wrote Not it under Stephen his uh, pseudonym. Pseudo? Yeah. I should check that out. Yeah, the, the Running Man book's pretty... I think it's short. I think it's more like a novella. Yeah, it's part of yeah. like a... Well, yeah. Oh, well, what was it called? It had like a hand with like all bandages and an eyeball in the middle. Mm, oh, oh, uh... You know what I'm talking about? Dang it. Yeah. Oh my god! I I'm, I, I don't was know. Was it like an anthology type thing? Yeah, basically. Yeah, or a handthology. Hand this guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, Actually, what? Go ahead, Rachel. Sorry, I was just gonna say uh, one book that I was kind of worried about was um, the Game of Th or not book, but like series was the Game of Thrones series because it's like I heard so many people hyping up the TV show. And it was like, I heard nobody talk about the books. Like, I've heard, like, my dad was a really big fan of them. And he's like, you should read them. And I was like, okay, cool. And I was, like, just a little worried. Because I was like, okay, is this going to, like, be worth the hype? But, like, actually, I have to say, like, the detailing that he puts in his series is insane. Sometimes it gets a little annoying because he'll describe, like, a feast. And then you'll be sitting there and your mouth's watering. And you it's like, okay, cool. Now I'm hungry. But, yeah, that was one that I was pleasantly surprised with. Because I thought it was going to be overhyped. Yeah, I haven't actually read any of the, the Game of Thrones books. No, same. Yeah. I read the first one. Um, I'm about a quarter of the way through the second one, but, like, it's actually worth the read. Like, the characters, I feel like you connect with them really well. He uh, he it, writes point of view, right? Like, uh, each character's yeah. kind of a point it's of view. Like, it's, hmm. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's like you're not the character, but you're, like, from, like, that third person. So it's like each chapter is, like, a different character that they're talking about yeah. and like the thing too is like he has so many characters in the book that aren't in the tv series that you're it's like holy crap like he wrote it, it's insane like it's it's so hard to explain because it's like each chapter is like from the point of view of each different character but there's like 20 different characters so like you have to go back sometimes and figure out okay what was the last chapter that was from this character's point of view like where did we leave off <laughs> yeah yeah um now everyone's naming their kids after them. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Khaleesi, the, which is which isn't even her name; it's the title. No. Oh. oh yeah, googling that, I got confused. Yeah, because I I have not watched or read the uh, yeah any Game of Thrones. Well, I got, I got through like most of the first season. But yeah, when I was looking up for like, Khaleesi and uh, da Daenerys. There we go. Yeah, there we go. that's that's, that's the name. Yeah. I've heard. Um, got mixed I haven't up. heard kids kids named it but i've heard um a lot of dogs being named after um aria oh. or like uh after the dire wolves too like i've met a few ghosts and stuff like that but i don't know if that was like more so like why because it was game of thrones or because it was a white dog <laughs> yeah why wouldn't you call your dog the hound <laughs> yeah like that would be sick <laughs> just the hound a hound hmm. it's a little intimidating when you think about it though <laughs> if i had a dog i would call him ear Ear? Yep. So I can say, come here. Come here. Oh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so 
See, I thought you meant ear. Like, yeah, like no, your no, ear? that's why I would call him ear. So I'd say come here. <laughs> it's too early. <laughs> I mean, super clever. Yeah. I've definitely never heard that one before. So they're thinking about bringing back the woolly mammoth. <laughs> yes, I changed the Wait, topic. What? Non sequitur of all time. Yeah, that was like a e- wild. Not even segue in that one. No. Haven't they been trying to bring back the woolly mammoth for like years now, though? Uh, yeah, it's been on the books for a while. But uh, have- they raised. Uh, there's a Texas uh, AI company that raised. Well, them and a couple other companies. Uh, actually, quite a few. But they raised fifty million bucks to give it a give it a boost. Yeah. I'd throw some 50? cash in there if we yeah. could bring back the woolly mammoth. Why not? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's an ethical. Know, there's there's ethics in there. Like I get it. Yeah. I get the the hesitation. Yeah. The but whole the whole Jurassic Park element of it. That's the only thing I can think of. It's well, just dr- like I can hear Jeff Goldblum in the back of my head. Yeah. That's it. Whenever like we talk about genetic, like you, you didn't consider if you could do it, or whatever it was. You should. Yeah. Or yeah. Should. But uh, yeah. Well, dinosaurs probably not gonna happen. No. Like like triceratops. <laughs> no, the the DNA is that. too degraded and all they have to do is like fill in the blanks. Yeah. But they don't know where the blanks are. Yeah, they can use chicken DNA to like kinda get a rough picture of a a raptor. Yep. But woolly mammoths. Yeah, which are They're still on the table. Yeah. I mean mammoths were around when people were like they're they're yeah. really yeah. recent, like, you know, a lot closer to today than what you would expect yeah which is crazy because you think it's oh they're yeah. prehistoric it was like millions of years ago like eh, not so much yeah so why not I, I nominate northern manitoba yeah why not sorry guys <laughs> here's the question would you, i mean it, would you eat a mammoth i'd try it no no sure i wouldn't why not it's like eating an elephant i would never eat an elephant so why would i eat a woolly mammoth okay well i guess i would eat an elephant <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, I feel I'm, I'm on the fence about it because I think it's cool that our technology is, like, progressing to the point where it's, like, we can possibly bring species back. Like, if we had endangered species, like, being able to bring that back and, like, that kind of stuff. But there's also a part of me that's just, like, I, this this could go wrong really easily. Cause, like, yeah, because I, uh, uh, I guess there's a difference to be made between, like, species that went extinct because of us or yeah. ones that just kind of died out. Yeah, like I feel like if it was our fault, then yeah, like we should definitely kind of, ma- you know. I'm pretty sure the mammoth wasn't us. No, I think it died on its own. I th- I can't remember. Yeah, I actually don't know because it's like I feel like the dinosaur one is like talked about o- constantly, like the dinosaur yeah, like, extinction. I- I'm but, like, by no he- means a paleontologist. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, there's. Yeah. Uh, I think mammoth falls into this megafauna category, which oh. is a large yeah. animal, um, and like there's no real megafauna. These days, except maybe Africa, where you have like giraffe. Actually, Africa had tried yeah. to. Uh, they tried to clone. Um, oh, it was a rhino. Uh, no, no, it was a, some sort of ibex. Okay, uh, ibex. And out of like, I think two hundred, they successfully cloned one, and it died like yeah. within a couple of days. Well, it's crazy. Like twenty years ago, they did the Dolly the sheep. Yeah, and, Dolly. And then, yeah. Nothing ha- has happened with like cloning since because like they made everything illegal in terms of cloning i think i feel like with cloning though like the ethical repercussions from that is pretty high how do you mean okay so say you you clone a person like does is that person a person or is there like do they have the same rights as a human like is there like like how do you how do you classify them like there's a lot in, in the in the area of ethics in that that i am I'm not sure. I'm, I, I, I'm really not sure. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll make a decision, and I'm going to say, yeah. They're a person? Yeah. 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 Then it might make people uncomfortable, but, yeah, you need an embryo. And oh, yeah. Seed, like a sperm. And then, yeah, you, that's, that's not cloning. Like, that's just reproduction. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they do it in the lab. No, yeah. If I'm not a cloner. If, if you're making a, a carbon copy of someone. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Which is just basically... A maternal twin when it comes down to it but yeah it, there's still it, genetic it, material involved is there like right yeah, yeah. but like is, is it kind of like i know this is like a bad comparison but like when like wild animals mate with somebody in the same 
like genus. So like when a zebra mates with a donkey and you get a zonkey, but they don't have the capability for reproductive. Is that the same thing with a clone? No, clone, Not... you're just making a copy. Yeah. It's like a Xerox. Mm, okay. Um, yeah, it's like maternal twins because like the egg split. So you get two copies of the same person basically. That's fair. But isn't, hasn't like a, the big thing with clones too, people were worried about that like people would clone themselves so they'd basically have like replacement organs? <laughs> the, the yeah, like oh, that. Like, <laughs> like, like, Michael, was that Michael Bay? Was it? Who was, uh, who was in the island? Oh, uh, crap. I, I'm pretty sure it's a Michael Bay film. Uh, the island, was it? I, I remember. I, I'm, I'm going to look it up. Yeah, all right. Okay. All right. I'll talk so Mike can. Uh, Look at his phone while I'm off camera. Yep. So, cloning. Yeah, but like, yeah, so like, was, wasn't was that a big issue, though? Because like, I feel like rich people would take advantage of that, no problem. Which was the plot of the island. You uh, yeah, basically had a spare yeah. of yourself so you could harvest your own organs. Yeah, in reality, that's, I don't know how practical that is. Yeah, like, that's, that's pretty well, twisted, have, I think. I mean, you have or, to... Or at least right now. Yeah, dedicate resources to keeping these clones alive. I mean, you still have to feed them or whatever. And they'd have to catch up. Well, yeah, they or, would. Or, or would they? Maybe not. I don't know. Um, I, again, I, I think Dolly a... aged quickly. I think so, yeah. Yeah. They, she didn't last long. Michael, Michael Bay directed it. Um, okay. Ewan yeah. McGregor? 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 <laughs> Ewan McGregor. So, Scott Johansson. You're from Minnesota? Scene Bean was in it. <laughs> Steve Buscemi, Michael Clark Duncan. Damn. Took in $162 million. I have to rewatch that because it's. I are, yeah. But it's 40% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> yeah. Rotten I actually tomatoes. have never seen that movie. So when I was talking about that, like I literally was just like talking about the ethics of it. I didn't even like talk. Of, I wasn't even thinking about a movie. <laughs> yeah. All I'm saying is the woolly mammoths. Yeah. Maybe uh, not a bad idea. I mean, I don't know what the benefit <laughs> would be. Like, you got to put them somewhere, know. right? Yeah. Like, if you're just going to like, make them to stuff them in a zoo, that's... Well, not just that, though, up. but, like, as an ecosystem, it's like, is there any apex predator that could take a woolly mammoth out? Like, we don't have anything oh, in our, like, natural world yeah, because, like, that hunts them. I don't even know what they eat. You would need, like, a, a megafauna apex predator, basically, like a right? sea tiger. Yeah, we can't bring those It's like those when back. you introduce... Yeah. Well, well, maybe yeah. maybe, maybe a saber tooth tiger, because we still have tigers, so maybe there's some reverse engineering involved there. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, too, though. It's like when you start bringing back things from uh, previous, I guess, decades or centuries, I can't think of the world word here, but like when you bring stuff like that back, it, it introduces like a new thing to the ecosystem that we might not be able to... Contain. Uh, sustain. Yeah. yeah. Right, because it's like when you think about, like, for example, when there is, uh, uh, I don't know if this is like, I'm ripping this off The Simpsons, but like when they brought when Bart brought that like bullfrog over to Australia and it didn't have like a yeah. a predator and it like took over, right? It's like that's yeah. happened in real life. It's like when oh, uh, tilapia there be a chance tilapia, yeah, is just running a rough shot all over the planet, yeah, right. So it's like I feel like if we introduce the woolly mammoth, there's like there's some repercussions that's going to come with that. Like, yeah, cool, it's a woolly mammoth, but like. Well, There's think, a lot of other things you have to take in consideration. I think for Australia, there actually is like a species of toad that was brought in, like cane, oh, is it? cane, cane toads. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's okay. right. I could be wrong. I, I, yeah, I think I think familiar. it's cane toads, and uh, they they basically took over because they have like no predator. Yeah, and see, like I feel like the woolly mammoth would have that problem. Yeah. Right. Plus global I warming. Mean, yeah, if it's if, if it's a thing. If they do right? do it, there were definitely. Uh, there would definitely be some necessary adjustments. Yeah, yeah. Maybe not much or many. Like, well, they have like the woolly mammoth has been around in kind of the modern world, like within the four, past four thousand years. So yeah, because elephants aren't really causing problems, yeah. as far as I know. Oh, granted, I don't. We don't live in a elephant country. No, we got bear problems, not elephants. Yep. But uh, I don't know. Yeah. Is it is it one of those like? Should we do it if we can? Kind of things. It's one Again, of those, I feel it, it would be neat, right? Yeah, like, yeah. It would be kind of cool. Yeah, it'd be so sick to see a woolly mammoth in our lifetime. But at the same time, like I feel like since it's, I feel like it's lived its time. I feel like you need to just let it lie. Like if you're gonna bring anything back, bring back the species that have been directly impacted by humans. Like the dodo. 
Yeah. Or Dodo's that, been that, impacted uh, by humans? Yeah, no, that was us. Yeah, that... that was it really? Yeah, yeah, yeah we took him out. Oh, sh- I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, oh almost dropped a square. I almost we, did. We, we've, been coasting, we've been doing good this episode. So. <laughs> I've said one. I did say one, we, but we, that's we okay. We need to get some more uh, Galapagos uh, turtles or whatever. Oh, I'm, I am all Galapagos. about... Galapagos. The more turtles, the better. Yeah, because apparently so, they, they were uh, too delicious. Many. Like, apparently... Wait, what? That's yeah, a, the, that upsets me. Yeah, the, I'm a big uh, turtle fan. By the, the way, Galapagos uh, turtles, like, uh, like even back in the day, like they were going to like bring some back to Europe to study, but the crew on board the ship were like, "No, we're going to have some soup." <laughs> See, oh now, no! Now yeah. you got me on the on the on the on the cusp of swearing. Because <laughs> eating turtles, no, son. no, 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 not on my watch. Okay, hold up. Hold a second here. You're cool with eating a woolly mammoth and possibly an elephant, but yes. like turtles, you draw the line. Yeah, I have standards. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah, well, that's yeah. <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> like, wait, no. Yes, I all will right. eat a woolly mammoth, and I would know I will not eat a leatherback turtle. That Specifically, is my a leatherback turtle. Uh, that was yes, a, that was an that example. Okay. Oh no, turtles, snapping like... turtles too. Like, oh, there's all sorts of turtles that I wouldn't eat. There yeah. is there is a lot of turtles. Yeah. No, it's. I, I didn't grow up in an area with turtles, so just yeah, I didn't pause this video and just Google turtle babies. Yeah, seriously, True. and then come back. Yeah, they, they got to make their way from the beach to the ocean. It's adorable and scary because the birds just get at them. Oh, it's scary! It is terrifying. It's, it's a mad like scramble just yep. to get like, into that water. Yeah, like every nature documentary I've watched, it's always like, and the turtle emerges from the sand, but now it's going to fight for its life. And then like epic or- like orchestra yeah, music like, comes in and it's like an insane cinematic moment. And you're just like, ah, no, baby yeah. turtle. Death, so death I might not be a fan of turtles. That, or no, sorry. Oh my God. Birds that <laughs> attack turtles yeah. is what I'm trying to say. Well, seagull, thing is, seagulls though, it's like s- seagulls. Are just, eat. Yeah, they're yeah. jerks just in general. All they do is scream eat and eat them. French fries. <laughs> Have you, I, I've actually seen a uh, a sign in like a McDonald's parking lot where it's like, "Do not feed the seagulls; they are aggressive <laughs> to children." <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Goose or geese? Geese. Oh yeah, Canadian geese, geese Swans? specifically. Yeah. Swans. Yeah, they're all jerks. I I remember watching a video. I think it, it was on YouTube or something like that. And this guy didn't know what a a Canadian geese was like he he I think he lived in Mexico and like moved to Canada or something and then he walked by it and it hissed at him yeah and he like it freaked him out and he was like what the heck and he like looked at the camera and like with almost like perfect timing he was like I do not like cobra chicken and I was like Co- cobra chicken cobra that's chicken. it yeah, that's, that's all that's it is a, now <laughs> that's a good name for it yeah right that's yeah. pretty accurate yeah I think so I I I, I think we should redesignate the Canadian goose to the Canadian cobra chicken I love that. That sounds more badass, too. Yeah. Sounds like I'm going to have fair. to renew my hunting license. <laughs> <laughs> like, nope. you're, you're attacking baby turtles. Yeah. And a tourist. Yeah. Unacceptable. It, Plus, they poop sorry, everywhere. Were, you, were we not on the topic of cobra chickens? Yeah. Should we go back to seagulls? Well, just, just jerk birds in general. Yeah. Oh, jerk birds. Okay. Which okay. are a lot of birds. Not jerked birds. No. Which they're... are delicious. <laughs> <laughs> but no, jerk birds, like birds being a little out of line. Well, the the jerked birds, too hot for me. What? I, oh, I, man. I, I had jerked chicken once and I had to drink like a liter of milk. What? It, it, was, <laughs> it was delicious. Like I, I, I like the taste of it, but like my body cannot handle spice. He's like, nah, fam. The, yeah, like jerk, jerk, good. jerk's pretty mild. Yeah. At least by my palate. Maybe, maybe, it, obviously. It, okay. But you also like this are was very J- much Jamaican a hot sauce jerk. Person. I don't know like if you're very much the a fact that person. was Jamaican. To, if that makes okay, any on, sense. Okay, hold on. There's too many people talking. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> What's going on? You go ahead first, Rachel. No, no, no go ahead, Mike. I interrupted yeah. you. It was Jamaican jerk, so I don't know if that makes any difference to the that's immense. Pr- that's that's pretty standard. Yeah, yeah, Jamaican jerk. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's got a it's got a little kick, but it's more of a like like I I finished the meal because like it was tasty. But like I could not handle, I my body is like nope. Really? Yeah. Well, where I grew that up, like the, the like the hottest thing we like the spice was salt. <laughs> yeah, garlic butter is too spicy. <laughs> good, yeah. Who is spice? No, no. Gar- garlic's good. I like garlic. No. Okay, sorry. And Rachel, you're saying? 
you oh, remember? Oh, oh, I was saying like, I, I think maybe we'll see. Um, I because like Chris was saying how like for him it's like jerk, like jerk spice isn't spicy, but I was also like you just bought a forty five dollar hot sauce, and you like you like yep. spice, right? So for you it's like spice is no problem. <laughs> oh yeah, Chris likes his chicken spicy. Yeah. Yes, he does. Yep. <laughs> There's no other way to do it. Barbecue sauce? No, yeah. no, no. Hot sauce over barbecue sauce. Uh, I'm throwing the gauntlet, I'm throwing the gauntlet down. Hot sauce beats barbecue sauce. Okay, hear me out. Spicy barbecue. They've tried. I haven't found any successful what? attempts. No, I've definitely had spicy barbecue. It's delicious. A good one. Yeah. Okay. It's well, homemade. Well, what can you? Re- oh, okay. Well. That's like that's the thing. You got to make it. Like, you can't just buy, like, spicy barbecue and be like, oh, this is awesome. You got to, like, put your own little, you well, know. Oh, you, you can, you should be able to buy barbecue sauce that's spicy. That's awesome. Yeah. You just haven't figured it out yet. Who knows? It's got to be out there. Mm-hmm. The hunt continues. <laughs> the search is hey, on. if you have a suggestion for spicy barbecue sauce. Yeah. Oh, oh man, yeah. yeah. My entire fridge door is just dedicated to hot sauce. <laughs> It, it actually is. Yeah, like I'm not being hyperbolic here. It's... So if you got any recommendations, I like smoky stuff. Like, yeah, oh, you're smoky a smoke flavor. guy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Smoked meats, nice. Such a, oh, it's such Some a brisket? good flavor. Yep. Okay. If you if you're going barbecue, man, this is again. Of this course, is like we're taking a topic. weird twist. Okay. If you're going barbecue, are you going ketchup based, vinegar based, or mustard based? Because that's important. Uh, probably ketchup. Okay. I'd agree, ketchup. Okay. Yeah. I'm not a huge mustard fan except for honey mustard. Yeah. I usually go vinegar based. Yeah. When it comes to barbecue. Oh. Ketchup. Yeah. I, I got an aversion to mustard. So, yeah, ketchup or vinegar. Okay. Yeah. I'd agree. Like, so, I've like, never had a mustard based barbecue. So, oh, really? maybe I'd like it, but I've, I've never tried it. I, I, don't, don't, like, I don't like mustard, but it is pretty good. Uh, yeah. I, mm. I don't like mustard except for honey mustard. It's got to have that. Honey mustard's good. Yeah, it's got to have that honey part, like like a mustard for a spread on a sandwich, just makes me sad. Yeah. Especially a delicious bologna sandwich. Yeah, mustard oh, mustard instantly ruins bologna. <laughs> bologna ruins bologna. Let's oh, be real. whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa! Here, here we go. Hashtag bologna bully. Again. Bologna bully. Here she comes. Yeah. We we I know we know your opinion. I hate bologna. It's bologna disgusting. Is it is good. the worst sandwich meme. No, it, it's one of the best. No, it's not. I don't know. You're lying I, to yourself. What would be the worst sandwich meat? I'm trying to head cheese. It, it is bologna. Head cheese. I, I kind of like head cheese. I've never had yeah. head cheese. Yeah. I've never had head cheese. The, the, the gel is what? Yeah, I, I could see that like because it's a different texture. And, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm, talk, I'm talking like like meat. I'm not talking about like no, head cheese meat-like is meat. products. Head cheese is meat. It's like the jowls yeah. and like you basically the take parts. the head of an animal and you bo- boil it. Boil yeah. off the meat. And you render the fat. Yeah. And... It becomes like a spread. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel See, like I've never we're tried, used I've never to tried this idea. it, so I yeah. can't say. <laughs> yeah. I, I think me and Chris kind of grew up in the same kind of... Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're just kind of used to it. Like, yeah, yeah, head cheese. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I've never had it, so I don't know. You've never tried it? Uh, if you go to your local deli, they'll probably just cut you off a slice yep. so you can try it. I mean, I'm good. You know what? Like, the description of it just does not sound appeasing at all. <laughs> I don't know where, where but, they got the cheese part of it, but... Yeah, the cheese is kind of a curveball. Yeah. yeah like, that's cheese weird. isn't even involved. No. No. It should be called meatloaf. Head, head meats. Yeah. Head meats. Yeah. Oh, Jell, yeah, jell, jell meat. <laughs> jell meat, yeah. You can see that. But, uh, no. Oh. Get, don't knock it till you try it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you probably I, won't like it, they but usually, you might. They usually like add like spices and herbs and stuff to it as well. Yeah, it, you can season it for sure. Yeah, so give it a shot. It's just me. Yeah, like I don't know if I I don't know if I go out of my way to buy it though. You know what I mean? No, like I said, like just go to your local deli. They'll they'll cut you off a slice and give you a sample. Try it. Eh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. It might change your life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like bologna does to everyone who eats it. Bo- no, no. Bologna changes lives. Hashtag bologna bully. Bologna does not. Yeah, it does. If that's my name, that's fine. I can be the bologna <laughs> bully because I'm just spitting facts. Um, Nobody's favorite lunch meat is bologna. That's not a fact. Terrible. That's an assertion. 
That's you just can't sad. Prove that. Yeah. If I know, you're, if I know your tons favorite, of people no, if your favorite who love bologna, is bologna I'm and so two sorry. of these people out of these three. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh. not your favorite. It's up there. Yeah. It's not your favorite though. Um. But I'm talking about like out of every meat that you, know you I'm, pick, I'm it's putting like it in the every spot. Time. I'm putting. I'm putting. If, if I'm making a sandwich. Yeah. Yeah, bologna. Bologna wins. Oh. Might be it's yeah. top five. Uh, oh yeah, top three. I'm going. Yeah, I like turkey and chicken too. Yeah, uh, but Montreal smoked meat probably. Like going back to smoked meat yes. once yeah. again. This became a food show, by the way. Yeah, it, it kind of did. All, all your media really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. they're gonna have to wait till later. Good, good thing we're we're called Media Minute. We should yeah. Meet, yeah, meet, media minute. Meet, oh. media minute. Media minute. Media. We're now media <laughs> minute. Oh, I'm definitely gonna have to make a graphic for that. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be in the intro <laughs> or the thumbnail, but that's that's going in somewhere. I love that. So, um, we're pro bologna on this on this no. channel. Yeah, you two are. I am not. I am not pro bologna. Well, yeah, I don't. Discussion is always good. Yeah. Yes. And having dissenting opinions is allowed yep. on this yeah. show. You can be as wrong as you want. Yep. Screw all of you. We could take a poll, and I bet you. We can try. Very high. This is neither a left wing or right wing podcast. It's no, a it's, pro, it's, pro it's a baloney or a baloney not baloney. Pro baloney. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all we care about. Yep. Conservative, liberal, uh, NDP, whatever. No, we're we're, we're this is a baloney. Strictly could you bologna. actually speak like speaking of like the election and stuff coming up? Could you imagine going to a forum with like all of the guys that are trying to run as uh, prime minister what, and asking and what they're like? I don't, I don't is. care. <laughs> like, what is your stance on baloney, sir? Like, just, <laughs> yeah. just to see. You. Like immigration, I don't talk about that. No. Uh, <laughs> economics, no, nah, don't worry about that. Uh, My platform, need, yeah, is that delicious luncheon meat, yeah, that we all know as baloney. <laughs> Or Mike says, say, I, don't you? Because don't you pronounce it a different way? Uh, you can see bologna or bologna. Bologna, I like that. Bologna sounds exotic. <laughs> it sounds like, like I don't think anyone country. says bologna, but that's how it's spelled. It's true. It, that totally. It makes me think it's like the old country. Like, where are you from, bologna? Bologna. I I, I go to change topics. There's something completely random that I thought <laughs> what, about. I, this I, week. I could talk about bologna all day. Okay, that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, okay, seriously, I. Uh, I think I mentioned a couple of podcasts back that I was going through like Greek myths and stuff. Yeah. 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 So, uh, you know, you have, you have the Minotaur, right? Which is the tar means bull and Minnow yeah. is the, uh, was King Minos. So it's the, the bull of King Minos. How does centaur make any sense? Cause it's a horseman. Yeah. Bull. Yeah. It's like the Hercules buddy. Yeah. Oh. Like there, there's no bull in there. How does centaur make sense? I mean, they just didn't have the right word for a horse. I don't know. They're just like, just go with, just go with tar. It's fine. Yeah, it's like, just <laughs> shut up and eat your bologna. <laughs> I, I don't like. Yeah, no. I was watching the thing on the Minotaur. I was thinking about that. It's like, oh yeah, bull of minus makes sense. Centaur. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Hit you like a flash of lightning. Like, wait a minute. Yeah. One <laughs> of these things isn't adding up. Yeah, the math doesn't make sense. No. Granted. It doesn't. But like, let's be real. A lot of mythology does not make sense. I, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm like, sure. If you look Icarus it up, there's probably sense. like a reason for it. But probably, like at the time, yeah. they probably was like, well, it makes sense it's, because it's got it's four a, legs. Yeah, it's a guy instead yeah. of a bull. And yeah, the like bull we already have running. the bull, but we need something for the horse. So if we just say this, I, either I, way, it'd be, yeah. I wish they were real. Yeah. That'd be cool. <laughs> Centaur. It'd be dangerous. <laughs> Man. Could you imagine a centaur baby, though? Because, like, Oof. human babies don't, like, we don't have full mobility until we're about, like, a year, almost two years old. Whereas, like, a horse baby, like a foal, like, yeah. it I, can, they, they can run as soon as they're, as soon they, as they're born. So it's like, can you imagine just gestation. seeing, like, the baby just, like, kind of flopping around? Like, yeah, like, I, I've seen, I've seen baby horses be yeah. born. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Also, like, what end would the centaur baby eat from? <laughs> Baloney? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. That's gonna be my answer for the well, because like, okay. well, because like, isn't it just like it's like the the human half is like the upper half, so like yeah. where your yeah. mouth and your face would be, it's like that's like the 
human, and then like the bottom half is the horse. Yeah. So I would assume like that yeah. would be the way. Okay. You know. Maybe they're eating head, head cheese. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, you haven't tried it. Don't knock it. To it's try gelled. It. It's jellied meat. It sounds jelly. Uh, it sounds like it wiggles. wiggles. Yeah. Well, it does wiggle. Yeah. It. There's uh, gelatin viscosity to it. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> you don't like viscous food. What about tapioca? No, I get, oh, 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 I will. Oh. Def, I will defend tapioca. Do you until, not like tapioca? Really? What? I can't do it. What is wrong it. with you? It's so good. A lot. <laughs> what's What's the problem? No. Can't do it. I so, just can't do it. So it like you. No, no. You no. need to explain. I can't do it. I just can't do it. It's like the the. The bubbles. Yeah. The pearls or whatever they are. Yeah. Of joy. Like I've, I love I love boba tea, but instead of like the tapioca balls, I'll get like coconut jelly or something. It's like I can I can handle that. I can't handle. I don't know what it is. I just. It's not my thing. I love tapioca. Tapio yeah, thumbs up yeah. tapioca. Custard. Sorry, not sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I can do custard. Custard's good. Ah. I, I like a good custard. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's like boring tapioca. I'm not. I'm. I'm not off the tapioca thing. <laughs> it's amazing. It's so good. You got something to bite while getting like the. Uh, oh, oh no! Uh, it's 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 a waterfall of wonderfulness. I might have to go get some tapioca. I'm gonna coin that phrase. <laughs> waterfall of wonderfulness. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, tapioca rocks. <laughs> might have to go get some after this. I'm down. Yeah. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. Side note, I'm going to bring us back to media. Um, have you guys heard about the new Hellraiser that's going to come out in 2022? No. Yes. So Clive Barker finally got the rights back to Hellraiser. Because that was like a whole debacle. Yeah, they ended up in space. And, and Yeah. I think yeah, that's it was the, bad. I think that's the only one I saw was the space one. That's the only one you saw? Oh, really? Oh, dude. No, go back and watch the first, at least two. The first, Yeah, the first two are really good. Yeah. Um, But yeah, so actually they're... Uh, they're getting it already. I think it's in production now, and I am so excited because, like, what, like the first Hellraiser was like done in what, like the eighties? Oh, I, eight, I think eighty-eight. Yeah, it could be. I could Something be wrong like about that. that, but in that neighborhood. And like, yeah. So it's like, and the effects were really good. But imagine what the effects are going to be now. Well, as long as they don't go CG. Yeah. Because Hellraiser all is it. all practical there's effects. Definitely, right? There's definitely going to be some CG, I think, for yeah. sure. But like, I don't think it's but... going to be as CG'd as. Yeah, because the first yeah, two were all like practical effects. Yeah, I, I, th I think you need like practical effects for like creature it features. It just looks like that. better. Yeah, Pe yeah. People's so, but, eyes uh, like we know when we see CG, no matter how good you are, and there's amazing artists out there. Yeah, but your brain still kind of knows that. Uh, yeah, see, this, this came from valid. a computer. Yeah. So um, yeah, so basically, yeah. So I'm uh, I'm pulling for practical effects. Yeah, hopefully. I hope so, like, but like let's get back to Tom the the people that they have like to like direct and stuff, I'm pretty excited because it's like David Bruckner and it's like he's done like a few of like really good ones, like The Ritual from like Netflix. I don't know if you guys seen you guys the have Ritual? seen that one. I don't think uh, I've seen it. Yeah, I can't say I have. That one's really cool, actually. If you're into Norse mythology, that's a really cool like it's like a horror thriller, but it's it was really well done. But like he's in he's directing it, so I'm pretty stoked. Um, the writers too are. Um, people I'm pretty stoked about because Clive Barker it sounds like obviously he's going to be part of it um, Ben Collins is another one and he's done a lot of work with like the director too so that makes me excited did he know that there was a Clive Barker video game back in mid 2000s I think what yeah. was, what sort of I, I, I've heard of it but I, I yeah, couldn't really uh, talk it about called it called Clive Barker's Undying I think it's like 2005 or something like that, that era. Damn. Can we emulate that? Okay. Like, I could probably just buy it. Uh, hmm. GOD probably has it. I might have to check that out. Yeah. Is it good? Have yes. you played it? Uh, I, <laughs> I guess I should probably ask. I, I haven't played it, but uh, I, th I think it got good reviews. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, Clive Barker kind of got just launched under the bus, like legally. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Or intellectual property wise like he got screwed over yeah he which, really did i'm really glad always... that he actually he's getting his rights back and he's kind of coming back because like i feel like i don't know like if it, like if you guys have read his books but his books are terrifying so i feel like 
I've only if we can like access more of that, I feel like that would be really cool. Like, I, Nightbreed was sweet. Yeah. I, that was a sick movie. I don't think I've actually read any of his stuff. No, really, um, really good writer. I would definitely suggest it. Yeah, and it's not always horror, uh, horror stuff. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah okay, which is cool. Okay, so what would be your number one Clive Barker recommendation? Ooh. I have to say Hellraiser. For, for books? Okay. All right, I'm going to have to stall because... I own it, but I only recognize it. You From know what? Like, you know what? Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. when you have an album, you're like, what's your favorite track? And you're like, I don't know, number three. <laughs> but you don't know the title because you just yeah. play the whole album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that song. Yeah, that's it's fantastic. Like the, the one. It's a good one. Yeah. Oh, boy. So give me one second. Yeah, sure. Sure. So uh, talk, talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Anything else that you've seen recently or heard about, Rachel? Yeah, actually, um, so I, I'm not a huge Saw fan, just because, like, it really scared me. <laughs> so, yep. Like, I, it, it, was, it wasn't that I was a fan, but some of the grotesque, like, violence, I was... I, I've only seen, I've seen the first one through, and I think I saw part of the second one. Yeah, uh, fair enough. But the, the, yeah, okay. And the only thing I really remember about it, it might not even be the second one, was, like, somebody trying to cut a chunk off themselves... Because like they had to lose so much weight to get out of yep. whatever cage they were in. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, was that two? Um, I think so. Yeah. yeah, if I'm not mistaken, it's been a while since I've seen them, but um, yeah, like I think that's right. But the reason I bring that up is because I recently watched Spiral, and yeah. that's like the newest one with Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson, which both played their parts brilliantly. Yep. If I do say so myself, and um, there was still that grotesque horror to it, but it kind—I of, felt like it made more sense in this a- in, in this aspect. So I wasn't as like grossed out yeah. or like scarred. I don't know if "scarred" is the right word, but that kind of vibe. Do you, um, do you just think, because it's like, sorry, go ahead. Do you think part of it is because maybe you're a little bit more mature now watching? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Like when I when I first watched like the Saw series, I think I was like sixteen. Yeah. So definitely left an impression and scared the crap out of me. But like, I would definitely go back and watch it again just to see if that's kind of changed. But um, with Spiral, it's like Chris Rock plays a detective um, that is trying to find this like copycat killer from Jigsaw. And uh, it it fits it really well because since it's like kind of more like a cop vibe from it, like the violence makes sense because it's like it it's showing you how grotesque this killer is. But also from like a police investigation. Okay. So I don't know. It's it somehow made it easier to watch. Yeah. Did you? But find it? um. I found it. Uh, a magica. Oh, was a magica. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one too. Clive Barker, read that. Okay. That's good. Maybe maybe for once once I get through this arduous terrible terrible <laughs> audio. <laughs> it's like why don't you just quit? I don't know. I and I gotta. I gotta uh, fi- finish. You gotta know the yeah, end. You gotta. You, gotta you just gotta get. <laughs> yeah. I get it. I. Talk, I didn't the even same pay way. for it, so like, there's no excuse for getting like my values <laughs> worth. Like, I lose nothing if I just quit. But like in your head, it's like you didn't finish that book. <laughs> yeah. You fall asleep feeling like a failure. Well, that's every. I for- tragic. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Speaking speaking of doing like not doing stuff that I should have just done, what? Uh, okay, all right. Here's the story. Uh, when, okay. I, when I was a kid, we went to a WWF show. Not WWE. It was it was WWF at the time. Oh, the good old days. Yeah. So uh, I have two older bro- brothers, and uh, my dad bought us all like posters uh, nice. from the show. So like, one brother got like Hulk Hogan, uh, another brother got Ultimate Warrior, and I ended up with Bam Bam Bigelow. Nice. For some reason. <laughs> and I don't know if anyone remembers Bam Bam. I Bigelow. do. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, his poster was kind of scary. But, was it? Yep. At least to me. Hung it up over like across from my bed. So when I'm in bed, no. I'm <laughs> looking at it in night. It used to just freak the hell out of me. And I don't know why I just didn't take it down. And you know That's what? Good question. Bam Bam McGlow was a hero. He actually saved some kids from a fire. Like in real life? Damn. Yeah. Damn. Well done, sir. Yeah. He passed away a few years ago, but yeah, no, he's like saved some people from a fire. So like this, this guy's an actual hero, but he was scary looking. <laughs> I, I was like four at the time, so. Okay, that's fair then. Like it's kind of like yeah. oh. But I don't know why I ended up with Bam Bam Bigelow because it's like he's not really like a top ten, you know. Yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't like 
Hulk Hogan. Yeah, not, he's yeah. not even million dollar man level. Like, oh man, <laughs> you got it. I, okay, so uh, the million dollar man, Ted yeah. DiBiase, was doing a signing at a comic book store in Oshawa. Okay, when I was living there, and uh, me and a friend of mine who yep. will remain unnamed. We're a little uh, drunk. Okay. To put it bluntly. But yeah, we decided to go check it out. And man, my buddy was just, was not having it. No? He just he was just heckling the, Ted DiBiase Ted Pate, yeah. the whole time. Yeah. Where's Virgil? <laughs> Where's Virgil, man? Oh, jeez. Yeah, we got kicked out within like 10 minutes. No doubt. No doubt. Oh my I only God. got kicked out by association. Yeah, yeah. I was just yeah, looking yeah. at comics. You, you weren't doing no no heckling. But my company was. <laughs> so we had to leave. <laughs> so you never got to get anything signed by Ted DiBiase? No, no million dollar belt. No, no, none of that. Although, Bret Hart did give me his glasses. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, because he used to have this thing like he would like when he was walking towards the uh, stage. Yeah. He would take off his, he had those like kind of corny like reflective yeah 80 yeah. very 80s yeah aviators uh no they're like they're mostly plastic okay yeah i can probably find a graphic out which i'll put up right here real but yeah yeah he would take them off and put them on a kid's head and it would, yeah. the kid would freak out and i got to be that kid and it was sweet nice yeah, that's so, super cool. you've had a surprising amount of celebrity encounters i yes, have yes you have <laughs> it's weird yeah I, I I have not. Well, I, I've yes. been, I I've talked to the voice of Babar before. Nice. That's cool. Gordon Pinson and uh, I, I I think it was Roddy Piper was in our radio station once. Nice. Oh, cool. Yeah. But they I, live is one of the best movies ever made. <laughs> John Carpenter, Roddy Roddy Piper. Yeah. Louis Gossett Jr. Hell yeah. Nice. But I, yeah, I, th- I think that's it for celebrity encounters for me. Like, <laughs> of course, I grew up in kind of a rural place, so like. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. I don't know. Is wrestling even popular now? Like, is it? Um, um, it is, but in a completely different way. Yeah. yeah like, like, I know in, it was big when I was a kid, like early 80s. Oh, yeah. Like, we had like Honky Tonk Man, yeah. and Superfly Snooker. Yeah. Uh, all those all those cats. They were great. Well, this is the barbershop guy. He's Brutus like, the Barber Beefcake. Yes. I saw him wrestle. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it was like. It was popular when I was a kid, and then like the mid late nineties, the Stone Cold era. Yeah, it was popular then. And the Rock, and, and the like Rock. yeah, the Undertaker just keeps going, man. He's I think he retired this year. Did he? I think so. I thought he passed away. Well, okay, I, I don't know anything about this. I hope yeah. that's not true. Uh, I, I'm gonna look I, it I up quick because I don't want to say I that. I know and Paul Bearer wrong. passed away like a long yeah. time ago. Yeah, Paul Bearer did. <laughs> he was he was fantastic to watch, Paul Bearer. But you got Kane, The Rock, yeah, Stone Cold. Yeah, that era of wrestling was, was pretty big. See, I was, I was kind of growing up in like the Andre the Giant, yeah, H- Hulk Hogan, yeah, Macho Man. Yeah, that, that was years. kind of my era as well. But the Honky Tonk Man was hilarious. Honky British Tonk. Barber Beefcake. Uh, yeah. Junkyard Dog. Yeah. Junkyard Dog was wicked. Um, Demoli- Team Demolition was it the, the guys who used to wear like, oh, the big yeah. like, football bats. Uh, something Hawk. There was Hawk and... Um, oh, crap. I should know this. Sorry, it's been like... 30 years, so. Yeah. A little, little rusty. Uh, just yeah. to clarify, The Undertaker oh. didn't die. I just looked it up. Okay. Okay, thank God. Yeah. Woo! He, but he is retired. Like, he's not doing it yeah, anymore. Yeah, he's, like, yeah. way I'm too I'm pretty old. sure it was, like, last year or so he finally retired. Ric Flair? Yeah. Ric Flair. Woo! Woo! Can we all do, can we just, just be corny as hell, I'll do a woo at the same time? <laughs> okay. Three, two, one. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> just, we just blew the audio. Yeah, yeah. Like, what that the clipped heck? like crazy. Rachel's like, "What the hell are you talking about?" I honestly, I was that never big into WWF or WWE, so yeah, this conversation's over my head. <laughs> Diesel, Sting, Sting. Yeah, I could just sit here and listing na- name wrestlers. Yeah, like, this would be great. Yeah, but it's probably boring as hell to everyone. <laughs> anyone who's actually watching this. Or even people who are on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Rachel's like, yeah, you guys talk about that. I'm just so, going yeah, to okay. sit here. Can we go back to horror authors, please? Yeah, like, I just want to talk about <laughs> Harry Potter characters. Well, okay, who will win in a... Hey! What? You love Harry Potter. It sounded like a dig. <laughs> no. 
Just an observation. Okay. There's no shame in that. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Okay, just making sure. Clarifying. Woo! <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> it's funny because when you woo, it gets all like robotically, like robotically yeah, cl- on my side. Clips. Oh, it's yeah, because I'm blowing out the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, this has been a yeah. How are we doing for time? We're like fifty-one minutes. <laughs> okay. I, I thought this was going to be a short one because we had yeah. I to love that. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to bring up the woolly mammoth thing. And yeah, we, we were talking we, about wrestlers. We talked. Yeah. There was we, we there, there was a, a meat sandwich in between. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Baloney rules. Various forms of meat. <laughs> Who would hmm. win in a wrestling match? Uh, Stephen King or Clive Barker? Clive, oh. Clive Barker, no doubt. He would Sparta kick his ass over the ropes within the, probably the first two minutes. Well, since we all know, like, we all know wrestling is, like, faked, I feel like what? Whoa. Clive Barker. <laughs> Hold on, you just started some S-word. See, you haven't sworn this episode yet. Keeping it clean, people. Yeah. Well, it is. It's totally choreographed. What? Everybody knows that. There is still a major physical risk. Oh, I'm no, 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 no. Here, I'm not saying that there isn't physical risk and that, like, no, yeah. like, I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is it's choreographed and they make it a certain way. They play a storyline, right? Well, That's yeah. what I'm saying. There's cooperation. And yeah, there is a plot, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. But people Oh, yeah, are, no, like, no. I'm not saying that, like, they're, it. like, they're not actual yeah. athletes because they are 100%. Oh, well, nobody said I'm that, just that say- they're not athletes. Yeah. No, but just the way Chris reacted, I just want to. <laughs> clarify <laughs> he got he was a little a little spicy there no what i'm saying is like i feel like clive what? barker would be like almost like the bad guy in that situation heel. and stephen king would be the, like the good guy and then so in that situation i feel like clive barker would take like the upper hand but then like at the last minute stephen king would pull some crazy crap out. and then just end up winning i like how uh mike and i had their same reaction and you're just focusing on mine Oh, I didn't hear Mike. <laughs> I only heard you. <laughs> That's okay. But woo! no, Stephen. Stephen <laughs> woo! <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, now Stephen King would go down. Oh, Clive Barker would, yeah, hand him. No, totally for the storyline. Stephen King would be the good guy. Clive Barker would be the bad guy. Uh, okay, the clown. Or like I, I don't. <clears throat> the clown. I don't know, like what it's called in wrestling. The heel and face. Uh, heel is the bad guy. Yeah. Face is the uh, good guy. Uh, yeah. Clown from it versus uh, Hellraiser. Uh, oh, Pinhead? Pinhead, yeah. yeah pinhead. Mm, I'm going Pinhead. Pinhead. Yeah. I don't think Pennywise. He's a twisted dude. Cenobite, right? Yeah, they're like supernatural. Yeah. Well, it's like Pinhead is like his own entity, and then the Cenobites are his like the dudes. Yeah. All, all I remember from the like the space when I saw the sort of lady and she had like her skin pulled down from her skull. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, that was one. Yeah, she was like one of the Cenobites, but like um, Hellraiser actually isn't a Cenobite. He's like a damned general okay. that made a deal, like that made a deal with the devil kind of thing. Yeah, they kind of go into that like into like the third movie. They could take a space is. spider, no problem. Okay. Yeah. Although I guess the space spider would have to open up that box. Yeah. So yeah. It, would be, it would be a hard situation. It would... <laughs> I know this will never happen, but I would love to see, like, Alien versus Pinhead. It's talking about space, and I don't know why that popped in my head, but I feel like that would be kind of cool. Uh, maybe? I don't know. Aren't they? I, I think they're reviewing The Predator now. I think there's a new Predator. Again? Yeah. They keep screwing up that franchise. I mean, I've never made a, a feature film, so I don't like S talking yeah. feature films because I've never done it. So I don't, I don't know exactly how hard it is, but the, Pre- the Predator franchise well, the, hasn't been great. Yeah, and the recent Alien films haven't been yeah. like the Prometheus stuff. I didn't, I didn't mind it, yeah. but it didn't it didn't fit the canon for me. Here, here's my main problem with Prometheus: was at the part where the lady's being chased by the spaceship. She just runs in a straight line. Oh yeah, it just, just like turns <laughs> yeah. like three degrees to the right. <laughs> yeah. just turn left. It fall. Turn left. <laughs> You're just yelling at the screen. <laughs> Stay yeah. out of the way. And uh, it wasn't Prometheus, but the one after where it's like uh, they're like sticking their face in like the alien flowers. Like, dude, <laughs> it's like you know. Yeah, you're science. You're space scientist. It's like. <laughs> Again, going no, back to that book where I hate everyone. Why aren't they vetting these people? Like, 
<laughs> on a scale from one to ten, how likely are you to put your face in the middle of a f- alien, alien flower flower plant? Yeah. Never. <laughs> it's like, I'm gonna go zero. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like that's just common like, sense, though. I'll go ten. Yeah. No? Yeah. Yeah. But people no, I agree. Are like, I think yeah. like the alien and predator. It's like I love that series. Let it die. Chill out. Stop making so many of them. Because eventually, like, people are just going to... Not eventually. It's happening right now. People don't want to watch them because it's just, like... Recycling material. Yeah, Yeah, recycle, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's no longer reboots. Create a new character. Create something new. Do something new. I know that, like, the main reason they're doing it is because they see dollar signs. And I understand, like, that's a big aspect of, like, feature films and stuff. Is, like, you want to make sure that the series is successful. So you go off of what has been successful. But, like, make something new. I feel like it's not that hard. I feel like there's a lot of really cool original ideas out there, and if they just did a little digging, it could have the next but at, Alien or... At the same point, there's nine Fast and Furious films, which and they're all <laughs> successful. Yeah. I watched Hobbs and Shaw. Yep. I think I think it's on Netflix now. Yeah, it came out last yes, Wednesday. Yes, it is. Yeah. Actually, not bad. But, it's a good popcorn movie. Yeah. Yeah, which is fine. But, like, again, like... Let it die. To the 1993 thing, like... People used to make original material. Like what? Yeah. What went wrong? You, you got to go to foreign films now for anything. Yeah. Kind of Basically, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, Salmon Game on Netflix, Korean show. Oh yeah. Where this uh, dude who's hard up for money gets thrown into this crazy oh, ass game yeah. show. I saw the uh, saw the preview for that. Is that out now or? Yeah. Oh. I'm only a few episodes in, so I don't want to maybe jump the gun. Yeah. I, but I, so far, so good. Yeah. It's kind of a game show. Um, yeah, battle, like, battle royale type thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, battle royale, Hunger uh, Games. Hunger Games yeah, yeah, that type of deal. Yeah, you do kind of want to backhand the main character. Oh yeah, he's a little, he's a little obnoxious. Okay, but again, like I said, uh, maybe there's a character arc that I haven't gotten to yet. Maybe yeah. there's some redeeming qualities. Yeah, but I'd, um, yeah, I'd say same game. Go for it. Nice. I was gonna say, speaking of foreign films, uh, Cube, the Japanese remake, is coming out uh, next month. October 22nd. Oh, yeah, I forgot about yeah. that. That's, that's I'm so excited. So a Japanese version of a Canadian horror film. It's got to be good. Yeah. It's going to be good. Like, I think, I don't know, For uh, as a Canadian, I f- kind of feel like we got a little win there because it's like, I don't hear very often of, j- like, Japanese filmmakers looking at um, horror movies specifically, like, from Western culture and being yeah, like, oh, c- I want to remake that. Because they have their own, but yeah, but Cuba almost feels like a Japanese horror type thing. It, yeah, it does. It, it kind of. It's very much. Um, there was a, a manga and anime series called Gantz. Kind of feels like Gantz. Is that on Netflix too? It might be. I think they. I think there's like a CGI Gantz movie, but uh, hmm. Gantz is pretty weird. Oh, it's about okay. People who die and then they're thrown into this situation where they have to hunt down aliens, and there's this weird spirit. It's like a really <laughs> weird cool. kind of horror thing cool i really like that yep anyway uh yeah. we we've hit an hour somehow yeah we, hey! this is supposed to be a short one yeah this was supposed to be a short one but here we go uh, we kind of went off <laughs> <laughs> baloney rules mustard drools yep bring back the mammoth yep bring it back yep <laughs> all so right. we can eat it <laughs> <laughs> all right for media minute round table i'm michael forwards i'm chris Raskowski. and i'm rachel edge we'll see you next time as one does <laughs>